What's the word, y'all? I'm back. Um, you know what I'm saying? Back with the articles. Today, we got the biggest decision every NBA team will have to make this offseason. What's throwing me off more than anything is the fact that they used a capital I in this will and then two lowercase L's. Why did they do that when they already have a lowercase I here? I do, I, isn't that weird? Teams will. Is that, or is it, I can't say it's all capitalized because it's not a capitalized, I don't know. I don't know what the heck Grant Hughes is doing over here. But I like these articles where it kind of talks about every single team because that gives me an opportunity to also talk about every single team. So let's get into it. The biggest decision every team will have to make this offseason. How do we maximize Trey Young? Um, I think this is kind of a kind of an easy thing. You put him around good good defenders, good three and D dudes, and so far Travis Slank, the general manager, has been doing a pretty decent job at that. They're like, you know what? Okay, we're not actually trying to do a traditional rebuild where we just get all young guys in here and have them progress. We're actually going to trade for some quality players right now, like like Appella. Uh, they already have John Collins, who is a a dual threat as far as in the pick and roll. He can pop. He can roll. Um, I think that Cam Reddish's second half of the season was very good. And they, they have the pieces right now. It's just about progressing them and continuing to, like, get, like, uh, let's get a bench mob in there, baby. It don't have to be uh, the best bench players in the league. But let's just get some solid role players in there. Like, trading for Jeff Teague wasn't a bad idea considering Trey Young didn't really have a backup for the entire season until that point. So just get, like, relatively cheap bench players. Let Trey Young continue to grow. Let Cam Reddish continue to grow. Hopefully, he has a good, successful sophomore season. See how Clint Capella plays with him. And let John Collins continue to grow. That would be my answer to that question. Next. Uh, Jason Tatum's max extension. Is that a big decision to make? Give him the max. It's it's Jason Tatum has shown me that he is a superstar or on his way to be that. I, have, I would have no problem if I was the front office of any team and offering Jason Tatum a full max extension contract that's not even a big decision i thought they were gonna throw something up and else in there like hey um improving our center position for next year and jason tato's max extension should be a no-brainer to me and maybe i'm wild but I, I watched a lot of boston Celtics this year and that boy is the best player on that roster give him his max right now right now just because a decision is big doesn't mean it's difficult oh okay true i guess you're right it's not a difficult decision i guess it is a big decision considering how much money a max contract is cool next uh chase the third star via trade or no nah? uh yeah that is actually a big decision to make because again we haven't seen uh Kyrie and KD play together so we don't even know if they necessarily need a third star to be successful but you also don't want to wait until it's too late to try to bring in that third star you don't want to wait till the next season after that till you realize okay now we need a third star uh because some of the players that you were going to use in those trades have less co time on their contract or now are free agents so that is a big decision to make that 100% is a is a big decision to make I would go around the route of yes get a third star because you can never be too talented Right? Isn't that the saying? You can never be too talented. And the third star helps them get more talent. I mean, obviously, you lose some depth when you try to make these type of trades. But we've seen teams be successful with the big three and maybe not a large amount of depth. And that is, uh, case in point, the Miami Heat won two out of four titles with really no bench. Really no bench and really not that many great role players. I mean, at one point in time, their bench rotation was like a bunch of 33 and, and older guys in the NBA. They made it work. They made it work. And we know KD is a, a talented enough guy. Kyrie's a talented enough guy. They just need that third piece. So I would I would go in on making a trade. Uh, how to spend all that cap space. I would personally say for them, uh, just throw some money at some restricted free agents and hope that some team is dumb enough not to match. You know, that, that would be my thing for the Charlotte Hornets because right now they don't really have a direction. They I think they did well in the draft last season with P.J. Washington. But even like... Miles Bridges, I know he's a fan favorite over there in Charlotte, but he hasn't really done much in his career so far. The Terry Rozier contract um, is a bit, bit extreme, but he's also pretty decent as well. Um, Vontae is still on that $1 million deal because it's a second-round pick. I would say throw some money at some restricteds and hope that nobody matches. I see the name Christian Wood here, yes. Montrez Hero here, yes, because... You know what I'm saying? There's not much more you can do. Just throw a bag. I think Christian Wood will be a great piece for y'all team. Next, in or out on Jim Boylan. I mean, yeah, that's a similar to like with the Boston Celtics. A big decision doesn't have to be a difficult decision. Get this man out of my locker room. Get him out, bro. 
Um, I'm, I'm actually so surprised that he's even still the coach at this moment. Uh, we just saw Daniel Gaffer. He was streaming. He's playing some 2K. And somebody in the chat asked him his opinion on Jim Boylan. And he was like, he's cool, but uh, he can grow as a person and grow as a coach. That That's like, that's your third string center saying that. Um, and and I'm always remember the, the play where Daniel Gaffer was on the flow in pain, holding his ankle. And Jim Boylan looked right at that boy and decided not to call a timeout. This boy is in ag agony, agonizing pain. And Jim Boylan was like, we can just play four on five right now. Get that boy out of our, uh, get him out of here. But the fact that they haven't done it yet scares me a little bit. Um, I've seen some conspiracy theories that the Bulls are going to keep him around so we can suck one more year because the 2021 draft class is supposed to be deep as hell. Um, but I, I can't do another year of us winning 20 games. I'm sorry, bro. I can't do it. I can't do it. It hurts me. I was a, I was a season ticket holder this year and uh, didn't go to a lot of games. It, that's how that's how much it hurt. Um, Jim Boyle is not a good coach. Next. Andre Drummond's future with the franchise. I am pretty confident that Andre Drummond's going to take that player option because it's worth a lot of money. And I don't even know if you can do anything about it. <laughs> At this point, you can't. I think he's taking that money. This is not a decision you have to make this front off or this offseason because he's probably going to take that player option worth like $28 million or so because he's not getting that on the open market right now. I don't know about his $28.8 million actually is the exact number, which he plans to pick up. Yeah, next. A Tim Hardaway Jr.'s contract. Tim Hardaway Jr. has been really good this season. His $19 million player option gives him the power to decide what he does next. $19 million for a guy like Tim Hardaway Jr. is a pretty decent contract as far as I, I would see. If I was his agent, I'd be like, okay, let's take that. Um, not only did you just have a great season, um, we don't know what the cap is going to look like this offseason. And you're playing alongside Luka. And if there's anybody that can find you for open shots, Tim Hardaway, it will be Luka. It will be Luka. Next. Jeremy Grant, Paul Millsap, or both? That is actually a... Now, this is a difficult decision. And I think we'll probably see that in these eight games and then the playoffs of what they, they're going to do. I still see Paul Millsap as a glue guy to that def, on them, them on the defensive end. But Jeremy Grant is such a good player. And we saw that in OKC uh, for the past few years. And the fact that they got this boy for a bag of chips is crazy to me. And he's just been coming off the bench and he's still been pretty good. Uh, Paul Millsap is older, right? I think Paul Millsap is going like 34, 35 years old. And maybe you do want to have Jeremy Grant come back and be that starter power forward. Or maybe we see something in Bowl Bowl or Michael Porter Jr. in these next couple games. And we see that, okay, we don't need to rely on Paul Millsap as much and let these other guys fill the role. But yes, this is actually a difficult decision to make. Next, choosing the direction. I think the direction is to tank. They will have money, so I think that's why they're asking, like, hey, Fred Van Vliet is the most obvious option for the team when they need a point guard, but Detroit could also target Gallinari, possible. Uh, yeah, so they, they have the money to to talk to some guys, but if I was them, Fred Van Vliet's a, a very good player, but he doesn't make you a playoff team right now. Um, Evan Fournier is a very good player, but he doesn't make you a playoff team. Detroit Pistons need to just bottom out, uh, get a high draft pick this year. Like I said, if the 2021 draft class is deep, Hope that you hit there because Detroit's not a place that's going to sign some big name free agents and signing a guy like Freddie. Sure, it makes you a little bit better, but it doesn't make you marginally enough better to, uh, to I think, warrant giving him an $80 million contract amongst four years. That's that would be my opinion. Let's Fima Khailuk, let's uh, Seku Dumbuya grow his players and let them play a bunch of minutes when they suck, uh, when the team sucks. What to do with. TP, TPE? What the heck is TPE? Uh, you could get Miles into the weeds discussing most unrealistic options, yada, yada, yada. Far, we're talking about Giannis. There's also a 2021st round pick to consider both the trade assets. Okay, I got you. Um, yeah, the Warriors do have to figure this out because, yes, they can use this first round pick, which will probably be like a top five pick to draft somebody to just have them play with the Warriors now. Or you could use it as an asset to get another star. Um, well, maybe not a star, but to get another player that helps the team be back into championship contention. If I was the Warriors, if I was the Warriors, depending on what number pick I end up getting, I'd probably try to get like a James Wiseman type player. Because uh, throughout these entire runs with the Warriors, they never really had like a really good center. You can argue that Bogut was pretty good for them, but you get what I'm saying, like a really good center. And I don't know if James Wiseman will ever be that, but he has the potential to be a very good center. 
And that's what I would personally do with the pick. And I know, again, you could trade it alongside some other pieces and maybe hit a splash on a on a star that maybe I don't even know who who is even available in the trade market right now for star players that the Warriors would also need. I don't know. So I'd use that first round pick and see what the team looks like next year. Uh, Dan Tony's future and centers. Yeah, Dan Tony's future is interesting because they didn't pick up the they didn't give him the extension, which tells me. Uh, they probably won't be the head coach next season. I mean, I guess it depends on what this offseason or, or this playoff run looks like. And centers. Again, it is still very curious to me or very weird to me that I know that you want to go small ball, but the fact that you really don't have a single center on the roster other than a 37-year-old Tyson Chandler, it's still a bit weird. It's still a bit weird that you don't have a backup plan in case P.J. Tucker goes down or in case Robert Covington can't guard Jokic. So, yeah, they do have to make that decision. Next. Whether to extend or trade Victor Oladipo, we literally talked about this on my podcast today, so it's funny that this is a topic here, because we know two years ago, Victor Oladipo was an all-NBA player, all-defensive player, a most improved player. He led the league in steals with 2.4 steals a game, um, but since then, of course, those 30-something games he played last season, he wasn't amazing. He was good. Don't get me wrong. He was good, but he wasn't all-NBA level, and then he goes out with a quad injury, and then he comes back this season. He didn't look amazing. But there was glimpses like the last game before the NBA season shut down. He put up like 27, 7, and 4. There's glimpses that Victor Depo could get back to where he is. But will he get there is the big question. And then if he doesn't get there, what do the Indiana Pacers decide to do? Because he's going to want his back. Hey, two years ago, I was the greatest. I was one of the greatest players in the league. And I know I could get back there, so I want a max. The Pacers probably don't want to give him a max if he doesn't show that he is back to that level. Or the, that he it could stay healthy. So I don't, if I was the Pacers, I do not know. And this is definitely a difficult decision to make because there is a world where Victor Lipo comes back and he get, gets back to that all star level place. But it's also a more realistic path where he's just good, but he's never great again. He's just good. And I'm not playing, I'm not paying a good player a max contract. So yeah, they have to figure that out. Next. Matras Harris for age and value. Yeah, true. Um, we know Matras Harris was one of the better centers in the league. Um, a very big piece on what the Clippers are doing this season. But there are going to be teams out there that's going to offer Matras Harris a lot of money. And you have to figure out, hey, do, is he worth the money that he's getting offered? Do we want to try to do this with him, do that with him? So, yes, it is a hard decision to make. Because, obviously, without Matras Harris, the Clippers team is not as good as they, um, as they would be without him. I mean... The the Clippers have like the the best what, paint defensive team in the league, and you don't really think about that with pl players like Montrezl Harrell and Zubats, but they have been. Montrezl Harrell's not looked at to be a defensive juggernaut, which he's not, but he plays the defensive role very well that they ask him to play. So I don't, I don't, yeah, they have to figure that out. I would not be surprised, of course, if Montrezl's on a different team next season, and then how do they replace that type of value next season? Uh, Cal is Cal Kuzma a part of the core? Yeah, I guess that is a decision you have to make. Um, I, I don't know. I think Kakuz is a cool NBA player. I don't know if he'll be anything more than that. So if he's just cool, is he a part of the core? Sure, you have to make that decision. How much to match for De'Anthony Melton? De'Anthony Melton had a very good season this year. I'm happy that he actually found a place where he could be decent. Defensively, he was rock solid. And offensively, he wasn't bad either. The 6-2 combo, guard, length, uh, nose to the ball, really pops up on film. Yeah, if you watch De'Anthony Melton, you, like, you could tell that he's usually like the best defender on the court in a lot of situations. Um, fifth highest deflection rate per 36. An elite rebounder for his position makes him a fit to go anywhere. So how much do you match for him? Because somebody will throw him some money. I'm not saying he get no baggy bag, but somebody will throw him some money. Miami Heat, uh, is it finally Gallo time? That would be interesting. Again, he was close to being traded there. The trade deadline or something happened that something fell apart. But he would fit perfectly alongside Bam Adebayo. He's he's definitely a more valuable player than uh, Kelly Olynyk and Miles Leonard. So yes, I I would say yeah. But then something has to go right. Okay, he's not just going to give it to you. So you're gonna have to make some trades to make it happen. In this situation, I'm guessing it would be like a sign and trade because Gallinari is also a free agent this year, and I don't think the Miami Heat have the money to sign him unless they let Gallinari go. That actually would would open some things up a little bit. Next, um. What's to do if Giannis won't sign? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. If Giannis don't want to sign the max, oof. oof, oof, oof. Tough. Next. 
Uh, what's Malik Beasley's value? Yes, and that's unfortunate that the season ended because we didn't get to see Malik Beasley as a starter full-time, and I think that would have answered some of these questions. What is his worth? He will be a restricted free agent, and maybe a team like the the Hornets, like I mentioned earlier, are willing to throw him a decent-sized bag to try to, you know, pry him away from Minnesota, and we just haven't seen it. But the times that he was playing, he's playing pretty well. Um, he's shooting the ball very efficiently. It's a time to big game hunt. Is it already time to big game hunt? And I'm guessing that means trying to put together a package to... To... What are they saying? Uh, flush draft assets. Do, do, do. Okay. All right. Ah! Uh, I think it's still too early. Personally, I think it's still too early to try to do some things. I think it is. I think it is. Let's just... Let's just see how they gel together because we still haven't seen Brandon Ingram and Zion gel well. Next. The point guard question. Knicks, do not make the trade for Chris Paul. I'm telling you, it does not get you over the hump. As good as Chris Paul is, it does not get you over the hump. That's what I would say. If anything, yeah, if you want to get Fred VanVleet the contract, sure, that that's a, that makes it a little bit better. It's not, again, it won't get you over the hump, but at least you have a younger player and not as big of a contract as the $40 million that Chris Paul will be making every single season. Run it back or blow it up. Uh, I read a report that people are, are speculating that OKC will blow it up. Uh, they already have a, a ton of draft picks. Chris Paul is going to have some value to some teams, maybe. Gallinari again, uh, Steven Nat. I, I would say run it back because you also already have these picks attached. So let's just let's just bring him back and let's grow that way. And I'm saying that because I like watching OKC play and I don't want to see that team break up. What to do with Aaron Gordon? We've been talking about this for three seasons now. If they ain't decided now, I don't know if they ever will. Uh, whether to adjust the core... Another situation where we talk about all the time, should they trade Joel? Should they trade Ben Simmons? Because they don't really fit together. I don't think they make that decision this offseason. Whether to renounce their own free agents. Okay, and who are these free agents we're talking about? Renouncing the rights of Aaron Baines, Dario Sarge, Czech Diallo, or Frank Kaminsky. They go to another $25 million in the spending room where you could spend money for some, some players that could help the team now. Um, don't renounce the rights of Aaron Baines now. Is, nece is a change necessary? I don't, yeah, these are getting tougher and tougher. Uh, how high do you go on Bogdanovich? Because he's restricted for aging and he's going to get some offers. Are we ready? Yes. Yes. Are we ready for this end? Yes. Yes. Let's revert. I'm sorry, Spurs fans. It's time to, to do what a lot of teams end up doing and hit the reset. Yeah, because this, this core hasn't been able to make it work. So, yes, I would say it is time to end it, especially considering they're – they're not getting any younger. Um, one more year? Yes. Would be my answer to that. Yes. But they do have big decisions because Marcus Saul, Fred Van Vliet, Serge Ibaka. Oh, actually, they have a lot of free agents coming up. So even if they don't, if even if they do want to run it back, who knows? Freddie may take his bag somewhere else. Or Marcus Saul may take a bag somewhere else. So I don't think it's the front. The front office does have a say, obviously, but it's not solely based on them. Um, whether to extend or trade Rudy Gobert, something I've talked about here before, because Rudy Gobert is obviously a super valuable NBA player, but do you want to give a guy like Rudy Gobert a super match, which he's, he's eligible for a super max because he was an all NBA player uh, last season. I would not give Rudy Gobert a super max and he is my favorite center in the league. He's just, I don't see him as a super max player and whether to reconsider a Bradley Beal trade, I, I wouldn't do that just yet. I would see how good John Wall comes back. With him, Rui Hachimura. Hopefully, he can bring back Davis Bertans. I think the Wizards, if they keep the players they have now when we add John Wall, I think they have a, a chance to be back in the playoffs next season. That's cool. It's a cool article, Grant. Okay, I'm going to give you that one. I'm going to give you that one. If you enjoyed it, leave it a like. If you're new, subscribe. I'll be back. Peace.